Did you love the look of the Fujifilm GFX 100S, but just couldn't get on board with the 100 megapixels? Well then, no worries. Fujifilm have just announced the GFX 50S Mark II. We've had a few days with it to see how it handles. Now, this is sitting alongside the GFX 100 and the GFX 100S, and it shares a huge amount in common, especially with the GFX 100S, but obviously with a lower resolution. Now, Fujifilm say this is targeting kind of landscape, portrait, all kinds of things really. And having spent some time with the camera, I get it. It's easy to carry around, it's relatively lightweight, and it's easy to use as well. This is going to be great for anyone looking for a very high quality all round the system. So let's get into it. This is a large format camera with a 51.4 megapixel resolution, which while half the resolution of the GFX 100S is still very high res and is more than enough for pretty much any situation. It affords you room to crop your photos as well, which is a big plus. You won't be losing detail, which gives you a lot of flexibility while you're editing. And for me, that's actually one of the biggest advantages for high resolution cameras like this. Now there's 14 stops of dynamic range, and of course the images look fantastic. I don't think any of us are particularly surprised by that. The Fujifilm colors are gorgeous as always, and the sharpness and the detail in the shots is just outstanding. You've also got those beautiful film simulations that you see in Fujifilm cameras, and they really are lovely, as well as things like a nine image multi-exposure and low light priority AF, thanks to the X processor 4. Now, I tested this a little bit with higher ISO values. It didn't seem to cause me any problems, but this also has up to six and a half stops of IBIS, so image stabilization, and that meant I was able to reliably use a slower shutter speed for my images, which is of course a huge plus when it comes to low light. Now I'd normally mention how that works well for handheld video, and while obviously that is the case, this camera is just not geared towards video. It can shoot full HD up to 30 frames a second, so pretty basic. It's sort of there if you really need it, but the camera feels geared absolutely towards photography, which is totally fair enough and actually kind of nice to see with this kind of camera. Now that said, it does actually have a microphone and headphone jack on the camera, so if you did want to step out with video, that possibility is there. Now let's talk about the autofocus. This is using a contrast rapid AF system, which is very fast. Fujifilm actually say it's operating at 0.27 seconds, and I had a little bit of a little bit of hunting, but nothing major. It didn't really affect my shots that much. I'm probably not going to be shooting fast moving subjects with this camera anyway. It can shoot three frames a second, by the way, so not really set up for fast moving sports and wildlife. And it's worth remembering as well, I was using a pre-production camera, so it's possible that a full production unit will actually have sorted that out. But I would say the autofocus, it was decent without necessarily blowing my mind. So what about the camera itself? Well, it shares the same body and design as the GFX 100S, which means it's relatively small and lightweight, especially when you compare it to other large format cameras. And I have to say, it feels good in the hands. It's easy to use, the controls are all very ergonomic, and they're generally where you would expect to find them. The EVF is decent, it's 3.69 million dots as a resolution, and it kind of did the job without blowing my mind. I think that's absolutely fine. It's a similar situation with the tilting LCD screen. It's sporting 2.36 million dot resolution, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. They absolutely get the job done, but they don't blow my mind in terms of a massive resolution or anything like that. Now, I do like how the LCD screen can tilt for portraits as well as landscape. I think it's a really nice touch and definitely very, very useful in the real world as well. Now, there's a new battery for this camera. It's listed as 440 shots on one charge. I felt like I was getting a lot better battery life than that, but that's the official number. I felt like I took about 150 shots with it barely feeling like it made a dent in the battery life. But sometimes the real world experience is quite different to the official number, but, uh, that seem but that seems like it's in the right direction at least. Now this is definitely shaping up to be a great camera for a lot of different types of photography. Studio photographers, whether that's portraits, food, pro photos, this is gonna be fantastic for that. And then out and about, landscape is gonna be great with this camera. There's a lot of scope for what you could use this for. And of course, that beautiful image quality doesn't hurt either. But what do you think? Is this camera something you'd be interested in? Let me know down in the comments. Of course, you can check out the full spec of the camera by following the link in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content, of course. I will see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.